All right. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the Plattsburgh House of Prayer. We're so glad you're here with us this morning. And we want to welcome those that are joining us online as well. We believe Jesus changes everything. Yeah. And I'm telling you, you're here because Jesus changes everything. Amen. So let's worship Jesus this morning. Let's stand to our feet. Father God, I just thank you for the opportunity to gather together once again to lift up the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray that your presence would fill this place and every heart in this place and every heart watching online, God, would encounter you in a significant way this morning. Whether through worship or your word, God, you're always moving and you're doing something in every life that's watching now, God. And Father, just pour out your spirit in this place in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's worship Jesus this morning.
never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't feel it, you're moving. Even when I don't see it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. singing that song, you see how he's a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, he's a light in the darkness. And I was thinking, uh, plug that name into whatever is before you, whatever you need. Do you need that light in the darkness right now? Do you need a promise keeper? Are you afraid and you're not able to trust? Do you need a way maker? Do you need a miracle worker? Whatever you need, that is who he is. That is who he is. So I want you to plug his name into that situation you that area of need and I want you to lean into Jesus this morning because he is there for you and he is with you he has not left you he is carrying you through this so as we sing it again I want you to sing it with confidence that he is going to meet that need whatever it is you need all right here we go so I want you to In the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, yes, you are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. One more time. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God.
You bring restoration. You bring restoration. You bring restoration to my soul. You bring restoration. You bring restoration. You bring restoration to my soul. You've taken my pain and you call me by a new. Taken my sin and then its place, you gave me joy. Lord, you've taken my pain and you call me by a new name. You've taken my and in its place you give me joy you take my morning and turn it into dancing you take my weeping and turn it into laughing you take my morning and turn
to my soul you've taken my pain and you call me by a new name you've taken my shame and in its place you give me Spirit of God is doing a work. Just let him do a work in your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Bring restoration, God. Father, for the hurting heart. God, for the hopeless. God, for the broken and the struggle. You're the only one that can bring restoration, God. Jesus, I pray every heart that's struggling this morning, whether here today or watching online, or maybe you're watching later today, God, when they hear that Jesus brings restoration, God, may they let him in, Father, to restore their hearts, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus changes everything. He changes everything our name. You're a new creature in Christ. He takes away your shame and play, replaces it with joy. He turns your mourning into dancing. Jesus changes everything. Jesus changes it. And scripture tells us if we will seek him with all of our heart, then we will find him. And that's one of the things I guess I want to encourage you today is don't try religion. Don't play church for a little bit and see. I'm telling you, when you seek God with all your heart, you will find the one who changes everything. And if that's you online today, if you're here today in service, in person, don't play religion. Don't, don't just try it, man. Go all out. Seek God with all your heart. And scripture promises, if you will seek him with all your heart, you will find him. And I'm telling you, when you encounter Jesus, believe me when I say he changes everything. And I'm telling my testimony, Jesus changed everything. And I'm telling you, mostly everyone in this place today, or maybe even you watching online, when you really met Jesus, he changed everything. Amen. Jesus changes everything. So Father God, let our hearts pursue you with all that we are. Let us not try religion. Let us not play church, but let us be a people who wholeheartedly go after the real and living God and his name is Jesus. And God, I know when we find you, we find restoration. God, we find restoration, Lord. We find the God who changes everything and his name is Jesus. Let's give a shout of hallelujah this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let's give our worship team a hand. What an awesome time of praise and worship this morning. Thank you guys for leading us in praise and worship. Man, God is good. I could have sat there for another half hour in that, right? <laughs> Waymaker. Woo. Changes everything. He's a way maker. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, I'm excited to get into a new message series with you guys today. But before we do, we actually do have some uh, an announcement, actually a, a really big announcement for us. And it's called With a Thankful Heart. And it's our uh, Thanksgiving outreach that we do. And I think I'm going to have Natasha to kind of come up here and share all about it. All right. Both of these things. Okay, I want to make sure you guys see online. So we have uh, this outreach. We did this last year. Alexis led it, and it was amazing, and so we want to do it again this year. We gave away Thanksgiving dinners, so we have already sent out these postcards to a bunch of people in the city, and all they have to do is uh, call or scan the back, which I know you guys can't see, but there's a QR code, and they just have to let us know, no strings attached, they would like a Thanksgiving dinner, a free Thanksgiving dinner. So 
We have already had quite a few responses. Just yesterday they arrived, and I think we've already gone over 20 in just a couple hours. So we're so blessed to be able to support our community. With that being said, we need your help in order to fill these bags. So I'm going to give you, hopefully, step-by-step -step instructions. Today you can pick up a bag, but we also have pick up. There's three different ways that, that you can help us. You can fill a bag. You can just give if you'd rather not go shopping, which is fine. You can donate. Or you can uh, also sign up, well, in addition, I would say, you can also sign up to serve on the day. We will be handing out turkeys here at PHOP. This year, they will come and pick them up here uh, on November 21st. It's a Saturday. We're going to be here from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. So if you'd like to sign up to serve on that day, we're going to try to do everything outside if we can, pray for good weather. Um, we'll have masks and everything will be safe. We'll be wearing gloves. We won't, we'll stay, you know, six feet apart, absolutely, and keep everybody safe. But if you want to sign up to help, so there are bags available in the foyer. If you are online and you would like to fill a bag, we have pickup dates. You can come uh, that later on at 11. You could come pick up one here today. Or you can pick one up here on Tuesday. Tuesday is from 10 to 3 p.m. We're here. Uh, and Thursday from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Or you could also pick up the following week here on Sunday, on Tuesday, or on Thursday. So those are the days we're going to be available. Those are the dates you can pick up a bag. So on the bag, we have a grocery list that you're going to fill in the bag. PHOP is going to provide the turkeys and the potatoes this year. We're going to try to keep uh, from not having any spoiled potatoes. <laughs> We're going to keep all those um, uh, perishable items for the last minute. But on your list, you guys do have rolls that you're going to buy on the list. So if you can, wait to drop off until the last week before, which is going to be November 15th through the 17th. Please don't drop off. Don't buy your rolls until that week if you can. If you, have, if you need to drop off sooner and you're not able to get rolls, we'll just fill the rolls in your bag. But just communicate with us and we'll try to be as helpful as we can. We are asking that you fill more than one bag. Each bag for you is going to cost about $17. So if you are able to, we'd love for you to take a few bags. We would like to fill at least 100, if not 150. That may seem large, but I think the need is there. And if it's about, you know, if we can give, say, $30, $40 per family, I know we could reach that goal. So obviously, if you are in need of a turkey dinner, <laughs> please let us know. We want to make sure that our PHOP family, is their needs are met. So do not feel bad to sign up for a turkey dinner. And I have these postcards with the sign-up information out at my table. They, this, all of this information will go up on social media. So if you follow us, make sure you follow us on Facebook or on Instagram. Uh, we're going to keep you updated as we go along. The one thing that I do want to ask, when you go shopping, if you're shopping, I want you to buy really great ingredients. I want name brands. You know how jarred gravy is not all that tasty as it is? <laughs> gravy in a jar if you've ever had it. So let's get them the best gravy in a jar we can find, OK? And let's get them the best ingredients that we can find. So when you're shopping, please remember that. And remember, we want to bless these families with our best. So I'm going to be out at the table. You can come sign up. You do need to sign up. Uh, please also, if you're watching online, do not just buy groceries randomly and come drop them off. I need you to come get a bag and come get a list uh, so that we keep all of the bags consistent. So are there any questions? Good, 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 good. I will be out at the back table afterwards. Uh, you can let me know. Uh, we just want to make sure if you are filling bags that you do sign up so we know which bags are where. Thank you guys so much. I want to also, the next, the last announcement that we have, I'm just going to keep going so I don't confuse my husband. Um, <laughs> we are doing house to house worship and prayer this month, and it will be at our house. So that is November 9th. Uh, you can come to our house. Again, we'll keep everybody spread apart. Um, but it's been awesome. These house-to-house -house worship nights have been amazing. So I just want to encourage you, if you are able to come, please come out. If you need a ride, let us know. Um, we are going to be at our house November 9th at 7 p.m. 9th is the right date. Yes, 8th. Yes. Monday. It's a Monday, 7 p.m. at our house. Thank you, guys. All right. Awesome. Yes, we want to give the best... How many of you know my wife wouldn't be sitting here today if I got her a cubic zirconia diamond? <laughs> right? <laughs> How insulting would that be to, to give her a $3 ring, right? Because I care about her, I wanted to give her the best. 
and at least the best that I could afford, <laughs> right? So we want to give the best, and it's the same with Jesus. We don't want to give him our leftovers of our life. We want to give him the best, and it's the same with our community. We want to give them the best, amen, because we love them. We love Plattsburgh. We care about Plattsburgh, and we believe that God is making a way in this hour to reach every soul in Plattsburgh, amen? Praise God. So we need you to partner with us, uh, and we're excited for you guys and us to reach Plattsburgh, amen, for Jesus Christ and the surrounding areas. So praise the Lord. All right. Let's get into the new series that I have. Let me pray first. Father God, I just thank you for your grace and your mercy, God, and I thank you for what you're doing, not only with this church and with this group of people, but, but your heart for Plattsburgh, Lord, and the surrounding areas. God, you have not forsaken her, and you have not passed her by, but God, you are doing a great thing, even in this hour that seems so difficult. God, you are doing a great thing today, God, and you will continue to do a great thing tomorrow. So, Father, we just thank you for your faithfulness to the churches, but but God, to this region and to the people of this area, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right. Praise God. So if you have your Bible, you can turn to uh, Mark chapter 6. That's where we're going to be spending most of our time in Scripture there. So if you'd like to follow along with the Bible, you can head to Mark chapter 6 right now. Today we're starting a new series called Forgotten Virtues. Forgotten virtue. So many virtues that used to define what was kind of good and wholesome in our society is being lost in today's culture, right? Uh, and even in some ways are, are now seen, some of these virtues are now seen as weaknesses, right? It's true. And it's my goal to highlight some of these divinely established virtues that ultimately display what real greatness is, but will also actually release a blessing in your life if you hold to these virtues. Amen? Praise God. So today, I want to talk about honor. Today, I want to talk about honor. Sadly, we live in a culture where many live without honor. We've relegated honor to ninjas and war heroes, right? This idea of, of honor. We relegated to ninjas and war. That was my best joke for the night so, <laughs> or for the day. If you guys didn't laugh at that, it's going to be a long one. All right. <laughs> but we've kind of relegated this idea of honor to ninjas and war heroes, and that is still good. Uh, yet honor should be a part of our everyday lives. This idea of honor should be a part of our everyday lives. And in Mark 6, we're going to jump there. In Mark 6, we actually see Jesus returning to his hometown, and it was a year after he was run out of town by the townspeople. So here we have Jesus. He was in his town, and he's run out of this town, uh, and he's been gone for a year. So Jesus has been kind of touring Israel, so to speak, uh, teaching and healing and performing miracles. So Jesus has been performing miracles while he's been touring Israel for this past year. He's, he turned water into wine. He uh, raised the dead. He opened blind eyes. He unstopped deaf ears so they could hear. He even multiplied bread and fish that we've seen already throughout this year. So he's touring Israel, speaking, teaching, healing, and performing miracles along with his disciples. And finally, after a year, he makes his way back to his hometown. And this is where we pick it up in Mark chapter 6, verse 1. And it reads this. Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples, when the Sabbath came. And he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Were amazed. Where did this man get these things, it goes on to say. They asked him, what's this, this wisdom that has been given him, that he even does miracles? is what they're saying, right? Wow, what is going on with this Jesus? But then they finish this portion of the verse, but isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this the carpenter? And it goes on, and they continue with this. It says, isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And they took offense at him because they're like, hey, we know this guy, right? 
we know this guy, you know, uh, isn't he the, the, the guy that kind of grew up on the outskirts of town? That was that mama's boy, if I remember right, right? This, this guy that was always respectful and honoring his mom. <laughs> he was, all, but anyways, uh, isn't he the guy that was making tables with his dad? Isn't this that Jesus, isn't he that ordinary guy that lived on the outskirts of town? And it goes on, and Jesus said to them, only in his hometown, among his relatives, and in his house is a prophet without honor. Without honor. Now, the Greek word uh, used here that's translated without honor is actually, a, I think it's atimos. Atimos. And atimos means to dishonor or treat as common or ordinary. To treat as common or ordinary. Now, if you want a common and ordinary marriage, simply dishonor your spouse. Right? Treat them as common and ordinary. And you're going to get a common and ordinary marriage. Now, if you remember, right, you guys in the room, when you were dating before you got married, right, you brought flowers for what? For no reason. <laughs> right? You brought flowers for no reason, and you would sell it, you'd bring her candy on the days, you know, like your one-month anniversary that you started dating, right, and then you're two-month, and then you're three-month. Anyways, we do all these things to honor the one we love or the one we're smitten with because they're not ordinary to us, right? They're not common to us. But then we get married. <laughs> and we start taking each other for granted. And we start to dishonor. And treat one another as ordinary and common. Now, the flip side of treating uh, someone as common or ordinary, in the Greek, this is called timē. Timē. Now, it looks like time, I think, on your on your screen, but it's actually pronounced in the Greek timē, and it's to value, respect, or highly esteem, to treat as precious, weighty, or valuable. It's to ascribe worth. It's to esteem and value. Think of a, a, a assigned basketball. Think of it this way. If you have an assigned basketball, maybe it had LeBron on there, right? He, somehow he had it in his hands and he signed it LeBron or, or, or whatever basketball player you might like. Or think of any sport that you might like and some professional signed it. And that is valuable to you. Now, it's assigned basketball, but this signed basketball isn't played with, nor is it ordinary, though it's just like every other basketball, right? It's just like every other basketball that's played with, kicked around, and thoroughly abused and left outside for all the seasons, right? But this one is esteemed, the one that's signed. This one is esteemed. It's, it's ascribed worth. So it sits on a shelf, admired, never treated as common or ordinary. You see, honor esteems and lifts up. Honor esteems and lifts up. Dishonor disvalues and tears down. Dishonor disvalues and tears down. To honor is to believe the, the best about someone. To dishonor is to believe the worst about someone. Honor lifts, dishonor tears down. And here is where I want to address a, a misconception in our culture when it comes to honor. Because we often think something or someone has to be honorable before we honor. Let me repeat that. We think something or someone has to be honorable before we honor. Married couples, I'm talking to you. Right? Right? If he or she would, would only act this way, or if he or she would only talk this way, or wouldn't talk this way, if he or she would just do this or that, then they would be deserving of honor, and then I will honor them. But until then, why would I want to honor them? You see, honor lifts up. Maybe they're not honorable because you not, have not honored them. 
Maybe they're not honorable because you have not honored them. You see, honor lifts someone to the place of honorable. It lifts up. It builds up. Dishonor tears down. So our misconception is, well, they're not honorable yet, so why should I show them honor? But I want to show you this statement because this statement is true, and it's this. Respect is earned. Honor is given. Respect is earned. Honor is given. You can honor because of their position. Honor is freely given. We can treat with honor before they're living honorably. And the honor you bestow upon them often lifts them to live honorably. It actually empowers and it encourages. You see, the misconception is, well, if, if, I, if I show honor to someone who's not deserving of me showing them honor, then it will just embolden them to keep living the way they're living. Has anyone ever said that? Yeah. But it actually, when we show honor, even to those that aren't deserving honor, it actually brings a conviction and a desire to live honorably. And I'm going to share on that a little bit later. But let's look at what a spirit of dishonor does. Mark 6, verse 5, reads this. He, being Jesus, could not do any miracles there. Notice it, it doesn't say he wouldn't or that he didn't want to. It says that he couldn't. He could not do any miracles there. And then it goes on to say, except lay hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. Now, I don't completely understand this. But what I see is where there is a lack of faith, there is a lack of honor. And where there is a lack of honor, Jesus could not do what he could do in other places where they believed and where they honored him. Tragically, we've become, for the most part, a culture that really lacks or is without honor. So who are we called to honor? Who are we called to honor? Biblically, I want to look at three groups, of, uh, three groups of people the Bible requires us to honor. If you're taking notes, number one is our parents. Mm. Where's the kids at? <laughs> Our parents. I want to remind you all that we're all kids. <laughs> Our parents. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12 reads this. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. How? Yes. I almost read further on. The Lord God has given you. So God actually commands us to honor our parents, right? And, and if you think about how kids kind of talk to their parents nowadays and how it's acceptable to actually dishonor our parents, even in front of other people. I remember we were just watching uh, America's Funniest Home Videos. How many watched that? Yes. That's our family laugh night. <laughs> we put on America's Funniest Home Videos. But there was, had, had a, a child, and he was sitting, and he must have been maybe seven seven or eight years old, and he's sitting at his table, and his mother's like, you need to eat the vegetables that I put on your plate. And he's like, no, I'm not eating them. She's like, you need to eat them. It's going to make you strong and, and build your muscles and, and give you the things that you need. He's like, no, I'm not eating them. She's like, you have to eat them. And he's like, oh, you want to see muscles? You want to see muscles? And he gets down, and he, he pulls up his shirt. And she's like, no, sit at the table. And he pulls up his shirt, and he's like, these are muscles. These are muscles. And <laughs> it was kind of funny. But Anyways, he goes and sits back at the table, and she's like, I told you to eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables. And he looks at her, and he rolls his eyes, like, whatever, and, and sits there. And I remember going, whoa, that boy needs a spanking. <laughs> but everyone laughed, and everyone thought it was hilarious. You see, we're living in a culture where things like dishonor are, are laughed at and, and seen as commonplace now. And we wonder why we're leading into a culture that is without honor because we're not actually teaching what it means to honor those in our life and especially our parents. We show honor to our mothers and our fathers. Number two, the second group, those in authority. Those in authority, those that quite frankly God has placed above us in authority. 
Whether we like them or not, we're to honor them. Romans 13, verse 7, you're going to see it says this, Give everyone what you owe him. If you owe respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. We honor an office of authority whether we like them or not. Republicans and Democrats, I'm talking to you both, right? We honor them whether we like them or not. And it's disappointing because we live in a culture where if I honor Biden, I'm considered a socialist and a traitor to my country. If I honor President Trump, I'm considered a racist and a hater. Yet it's the divine call of God to honor those in authority. Are we swayed by God or people? Are we swayed by God or people? You see, people, honor is becoming a forgotten virtue. Honor is not earned, it's given. Honor is not earned, it's given. Maybe it's your boss, and he's as dumb as a box of rocks. Well, if you want authority one day, you're going to have to learn how to properly be under before you can be over somebody. Learning how to be under is honoring those over you, whether they deserve it or whether they don't. Ladies, you don't like your husband? He's not a great leader? leader? Honor him. Honor him. If you treat him as ordinary or common, he will never feel empowered to actually lead his family. If you show him honor, watch as he grows into the honorable leader God has called him to be. See, those in authority, we show honor. Respect is earned, but honor is given. And number three, our pastors and church leaders. Our pastors and church leaders. Let's look at 1 Timothy 5, 17. It says this, the elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor especially those who work in is preaching and teaching. In case you're wondering, that does include me. So if you are going to bring a plate of cookies to honor somebody, <laughs> you should be bringing me two plates of cookies. <laughs> I'm just kidding here. Uh, but it, it is a biblical mandate that we honor those that are spiritually in authority. And, and I've seen churches shrivel up and die, and it's be, because they've dishonored their pastors, whether, whether they kind of discredited their authority or maybe it was discrediting their ideas or treating them like a hireling. You see, dishonor tears down. It never has the opposite effect. If you're looking for someone to take the place that God has called them to be, dishonoring them, it, them isn't going to bring them there. When you honor them, it lifts them up and brings them to that place. And I promise you, if you embrace a culture that honors those in spiritual authority, that church will grow and thrive because of the divine principle of honor. The divine principle of honor. Right? Think of it this way. If, it, if a husband, if you look at your home and the husband that's leading your family, if you honor him, if you like, honey, if that's your decision, we honor the place that God has put you in our home. And if that's your decision, we honor that and we honor you. And we think somehow it's going to embolden them to do the opposite. But what it does, it actually lifts them to a place of accountability before God. And they begin to say, man, I need to be accountable for my family. I need to seek God and I need to put their interests first. And I remember seeing this in, in, even in our marriage early on. And what I learned was when she would honor me, it changed everything inside of me. Instead of fighting against her, I started fighting for her. Right? Instead of fighting against her, I started fighting for her. You see, when, when authority is given honor, it elevates them to the place to begin to walk out of the life uh, of, of being honorable. And it's the same as with a pastor, right? When you say, hey, pastor, we respect your place of authority in the church. Uh, we respect your decisions. Uh, and we just honor you as the pastor. It, it makes the lead pastor go, wow. Wow. Right? It creates the need to seek God for these people that honor me even when I don't deserve it. 
even when I don't deserve it, they honor me. And it brings me to my knees to begin to seek God for what's not best for me or the church leader or the church authority, but what's best for the people. And it does the same thing in the home. Amen? You see, honor lifts up. Romans 12.10 reads this. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Outdo one another in showing honor. You see, honor lifts everyone. And I challenge you to honor everyone in your life. Right? Maybe it's the volunteers at this church that come in early to get everything ready for, for everyone to come in and, and have a great experience. Honor them. Honor them. Maybe it's the, those in the pig, uh, P-Hop Kids Ministry or the P-Hop Kids team that are, that are serving your kids while you're in here. Honor them. Outdo one another in honoring those type of people. Get, get them cards, maybe gift cards. Find out their birthdays. Outdo one another in showing honor. Those leading small groups, we're in the middle of small groups, right? Every week, these leaders of small groups, they're, they're cleaning their house. They're preparing for you to come. They're taking time to prepare whatever they're doing for you. Show honor to those that minister to you and your family. Outdo one another in showing honor. Maybe it's your boss. Maybe it's your parents. Maybe it's friends. Outdo one another in showing honor. Amen? You want a great marriage? Outdo one another in showing them honor. Highly esteem your spouse and show value and lift them up. Amen? Praise God. Outdo one another in showing honor. All right. So why are we a culture without honor? Why are we a culture that, if not without, is tending or uh, leading towards a place of without honor? And I believe the reason our culture is dishonoring is because people aren't honoring God. Because people aren't honoring God. Psalm 22, verse 23 says, You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. You see, the problem is we're treating God as common and ordinary. And we live, especially in kind of the Americanized church of treating God as common and ordinary, right? He's just the big guy upstairs, right? He's just kind of that Joel cool camel guy that's like, yay, you know, and he's just kind of cool with everything we're doing because he loves us, right? He's just cool with everything, right? He's your, he's your homeboy, or maybe he's that six-pound, eight-ounce baby Jesus. <laughs> but the truth is, he's none of those things. He's not a baby anymore. No, he's a king. In fact, he's the king of kings. And he's the lord of lords. And he's coming, and he is the coming deliverer of all humanity and all the earth. And when we begin to honor God for who he is, and we begin to honor him, it will trickle down into every other relationship that you and I have. And, we be, and when we begin to understand that, that God is not ordinary and he's not to be treated as common, and that when we ourselves were valuable enough to God that he would come and die on the cross, that we might be restored into right relationship with God, we begin to see God's value in us and we begin to see God's value in those around us. And when we see that, then we will begin to reclaim this forgotten virtue of honor. Amen. I want to end with this. We can get our worship team up. They're going to play us out this morning. Isaiah 29, 13. Isaiah 29, 13, the Lord says, these people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but, but their hearts are far from me. How do we honor God? How do we get back to the place of honoring God first and foremost? It's not about what we say. It's not how we talk 
about God. Honoring God is how we live. Amen? Honoring God is how we live. So if we want to get back to the place of honoring God, we have to do something that I talked about earlier. Giving God all of ourselves, all of our heart, and allow our lives to reflect how we are honoring God every day of our lives. Amen? And then it's in that moment that this honor that God says, hey, you guys give honor. Not because they deserve it. Because I've called you to do that. Because I've called you to live, uh, lift up every person around you. Whether it's your family, whether it's in your workplace, whether it's your friends. I'm telling you, if you will honor those around you, you'll lift them up into the place where they can begin to experience and lead from the place that God has called them to. Amen. So let's reclaim this forgotten virtue of honor. Amen. Let's honor God not with just our lips. Let's honor him with our lives. And when we do that, we will begin to reclaim the forgotten virtue of honor. Let's stand. We're going to pray. And I want to pray with you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, as we end our time together here, Father, I, I pray that you would plant this message deep in our hearts. God, that we would see where we've dishonored others or where we've lacked in showing honor. And God, let it remind us and let us walk out of this place being a people who reclaim this idea of showing honor and begin to live it out every day in showing honor to those around us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If you're someone here today and you've recognized, man, I've there's some areas that I know that the Spirit of God is convicting me where I should have showed honor and I haven't. If that's you today, I just want to ask you to just raise your hand for a moment. Because I really believe there's a, a setting free today to begin to live out this life of honor. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, you see in this room every hand that's raised, and even those online, God, where they said, man, Lord, I, I've dropped the ball. God, I need your help, and I need your grace, and, and God, I am. I'm, I'm struggling, but God, I know if your word is, is true, then if I, if I honor you in this, if, if I believe you and I step out in this, God, I can trust the outcome to you. And Father, I pray that those hands that are raised today, God, that you would give them a supernatural confidence, not in themselves, not in their circumstances, but in the word of God that promises blessing if you will honor those around you. And though they might not see it, and though we might not see it, we are lifting them up as we honor those around us. So Father, give us that grace right now Wash over us, Lord. Let that anointing fill us to be a people of honor. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise the Lord. Now, as I wrap up today, maybe you're here today and, and you, you don't know Jesus like we talked about. That Jesus that changes everything. You've never given him all your heart. In fact, you've never given him any of your heart. And you recognize that you don't live a life of honoring God because you've never looked at him as one who deserves honor. And today, I want to give you the invitation for today to be the first day that you give Jesus Christ all your heart and all your soul. And you live a life forevermore honoring the real and living God. Jesus. And all it takes is a simple prayer recognizing that you need Jesus. And I can guarantee you, you need Jesus because I need Jesus. Everyone needs Jesus. So Father, I thank you for those whose hearts are, are recognizing they need you, Lord. Father, and I pray that today you would give them confidence to turn their lives and their hearts to you. Jesus name. 
And if that's you, if you're watching online, if you're here today, just get your hand up and say, hey, that's me. That's me. I need Jesus today. Don't be, don't be shy. Don't be embarrassed. Just get them up. Yes. Even online, just get them up. It's between you and God. And I want you to, to say this prayer with me. And actually, I'm going to ask all of our family to say this prayer as well. Father God, forgive me my sins. Wash me clean. Turn my shame into joy. And I give you all of my life. And I promise to follow you all the days of my life. And I receive your Holy Spirit. And I am now made right with God. And my life is no longer my own. But it is fully yours, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let's give a hallelujah this morning. Because if you said that prayer, you are now a child of God and you will spend eternity with him. But you get to encounter him here and now, knowing that God is with you forever. If you uh, said this prayer online, I'd love for you to fill out a form that you're going to see in the comment section. Let us know that you said this prayer and you committed your life to Christ. And we want to pray with you and actually send you a book to help you on your faith journey. If you said that prayer today, I'd love to see you after the service because I would love to pray with you and encourage you in your newfound faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's praise Jesus as our worship team leads us in one last song. today that God is with you and for forever will be making a way for you. Amen. Praise God. I pray that you were blessed today. And as you leave this place, I want to remind you, you have one life to live. Live it for Jesus and you will never, ever be disappointed. Amen. So praise God. Thank you for coming out today and be blessed and go in the power of the Holy Spirit. in the